Well, in the last episode, we unlocked the Novelisk. And of course, that means we'll need to automate the production of these, uh, well, basically pipe bombs. So, of course, that's something we're going to do today. And if you missed last episode, it was about the painstaking process of making sure your base that is pre-update 0.1 works perfectly fine after the update, which is possible but takes some work. This is an ongoing series, so for this project we had to upgrade this base and make sure it's compatible to 1.0 by doing all those different fixes. If you also have a base uh, that you want to have uh, left or a save or something like that that you want to keep, uh, watch the previous episode and you'll, uh, you'll learn how to adapt it, right? Anyways, uh, we upgraded the uh, sulfur research here in the MAM. So if you don't know how to get the Nobelisk, it's under here. You need to research sulfur, black powder, and then you get down to the Nobelisk detonator. So we did that last time. The Nobelisk and the black powder is craftable inside the equipment's workshop, together with a detonator, of course. So what do we need? Did you know about the N menu? You can search there. So just write in Nobelisk. It's probably named after Alfred Nobel, if you didn't realize that. But anyways, uh, here you can see, uh, click to expand. So we need uh, two black powder per um, two steel pipes. Both are 20 per minute and uh, together that will give us 10 Nobelisks per minute which should be absolutely enough, to be honest, uh, because um, we are going to use them ourselves. And if we produce more, though, that's absolutely fine, because we can, of course, put it in the sink, as we do with everything else. We are overproducing at this uh, series. So we're just slapping together a couple of uh, portable miners, just like that. Ooh, this is a new nice thing I didn't notice in 1.0. You can stack portable miners. Wow, okay. So that means we can we can just uh, make a couple of them, right? That's pretty handy. I didn't know that. That's, that's new. Anyways, uh, we need to find some coal and some sulfur to uh, do our fun times. This is a little weird random tip I recommend to everyone. Just have a couple of dummy machines standing around at your base. So you can like go into them, find a recipe you're looking for, see, okay, 15 per minute, 15 per minute, and then I get 30 per minute. And if we check here again, we can see we actually need uh, 20 per minute, right? So yeah, we need 20 per minute. So this this is too much. That means we can decrease this by 20. And there we go. So 10 coal and 10 sulfur per minute is actually what we need for a perfect balanced little thing here. All right, I checked my uh, inventory. I have a lot of stuff here, so we should be able to build something. Uh, it's now time to search for coal. I already know where my coal is. So I'm gonna search for some sulfur and uh, we can start on the map here. And here we can see we got sulfur, a normal purity ore there and a impure here. So we're gonna go with a normal, which is uh, pretty close to the coal power plant, which is nice. And that's probably where we need to source the coal because, uh, well, I don't know any other coal areas uh, closer by at the moment. So um, we should pack up our things and go. All right. Ah, look here, here, here. There we have it. Very nice. Isn't this very handy? This is why we have this uh, little um, things. Then you'll just click uh, C and you'll drop it. And you can uh, put it out again. It's very handy. And then you can drop it again. Isn't this pretty nice? It's so handy. So here we have this, uh, the, ooh, we got company, ladies and gentlemen. We 
damage, probably okay. We'll just need to clear this out a little bit. Right, so now we can do in some different ways here, but we're going to do like this. This is gonna be deleted, man. Uh, we're going to build our little miner here. We're gonna have a Mark II miner. We can output as much as possible. Also, there are the new super cool little power plant things. Don't forget that. So, uh, no, not power plant, I mean power lines. So, uh, we're, uh, this is like the first build here because uh, it was so recently we moved over uh, this base that we actually use these uh, power platforms. Even though they're um, announced in update 8, I didn't start using them. But they're really cool. Uh, anyway, it can be a little bit good of an idea to stack up on some kind of buffer while, while we're at it. So I'm going to add a little storage container and connect it up in the meantime. Here. Oh, we, we got friends here, that's, that's for certain. Right, so we're outputting 120 per minute. That's a Mark II belt. Uh, in general, I would only do the type of Mark of belt that you need and not more. Because otherwise it's, yeah. It's 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 better to use the appropriate speeds. It's usually wasteful to do in any other way. So I think we have a little power line to connect up so we can get our sulfur. And uh, I think we're going to drag the resources towards here. I do not think we need to uh, move around anything from here to the sulfur that would be a little bit weird right so this thing isn't really connected up to power so if we connect up this to power we should be ready to go basically that's of course a full connection well I think we're dragging it down there instead and taking this one and connecting up to something else instead. It Everything has to look nice when we're uh, looking at it. Okay, right now uh, we should be producing some sulfur. Just to remember why we're doing this. This. Thank you. Is why we're doing this. We can finally blow these very pesky, dangerous gas generating things away. Oh, that's so beautiful. Anyways, we'll need to eat something. So that's why we're trying to automate this, because we need a lot of explosives. Right. Power is now connected, which means sulfur is on the way. So, we are making this uh, not-so-beautiful snake back home, uh, so that we can enjoy our nice-smelling yellow friends. So, one thing that remains is how should we store source our steel pipes? Well, fortunately, I have the answer for that. I did some calculations, and it turns out we are producing a lot more uh, steel beams than we actually need. So, one machine producing steel beams basically takes 60 steel per minute, right? Uh, and one machine uh, producing steel pipes takes 30 per minute. So, basically, um, I can decrease the steel beam production by one machine. So, if I put this to 50%, it will now, well, we will produce 7.5 less steel beams per minute which is absolutely fine. We have that uh, space. We're producing 45 per minute right now, and we need not quite 30, we need 24. Um, and if we have 30, it will be refilled automatically and stuff like that. Anyways, that means we have 30 more, 30 more steel ingots to use per uh, minute. So if we overclock this machine, we get 10 extra, and if we overclock another machine, well, we get 10 extra, and then we used up all those uh, 30 extra steel beams per minute. 
So we have now effectively solved the problem. We just balanced our production a little bit. We're now producing a little bit more steel uh, pipes and a little less steel beams, which means we can take steel beams from our main outlet in order to make uh, our uh, not pipe bombs. Very nice. So up here is the uh, sulfur thing, which is nice. Can we like, no, click the wrong button. If you want to ping somewhere, you hold alt and left click. It's very handy. There we have our sulfur. And in here, we're going to source our coal. Uh, because I checked around on our different coal production facilities. Uh, and it turns out that this machine is running at 85% efficiency. And that is because we are producing a little bit too much uh, coal here right now after the uh, rebalance of uh, how much coal you need or how much steel you need rather to produce uh, encased industrial beam. So that's, uh, that's something that we went through in the last episode, but we didn't fine tune anything. So we have a lot of extra space here. So we only need to connect a little uh, splitter and uh, steal this coal and mix it with the sulfur in order to make our black powder. Or actually, I just realized we can do it even more simply. Here we already have a overclocked machine that's uh, producing coal for our main steel production. It's already overclocked, so we can just drag it up to whatever exactly we need, which we're going to check right away. Uh, also, the uh, sulfur machine, well, the sulfur is getting down there, but the sulfur mining machine, we will, out, uh, we will uh, adjust the output so it will exactly match what we're using since we're not using sulfur for anything else right now. It would be wasteful to uh, have it on full production. If we do that, we have the uh, power going up and down pretty quickly, uh, which is not nice. Um, so it's better to have the power more constant and uh, to do that you can just make sure all the machines are adjusted approximately in a good way and uh, it will be a little bit more balanced and smooth. So less spikes and less valleys in your power grid. Like I don't have the best power grid in the world, especially not after the update, but we fixed most things. Uh, but you can see it's not big spikes or big valleys. It's uh, somewhat even, which is uh, what we're aiming for. The more evenness, the better. Well, it was some time ago, so I'll just say this in case you're new to the game. If you hold control, you will align to the global grid. And I've been doing that for quite some time here. We want to align to the global grid here. Uh, so I'm doing that and uh, everything will be a little bit more smooth and nice. Another tip is to not build in nice uh, plants because you can't exactly plant them. So it's good to keep them so you can harvest them whenever uh, you need some berries or whatever. Sometimes I even do a little uh, special garden for each of the plants. So maybe we should do that uh, this time too. The cool thing with our explosives manufacturing facility for the Nobelisk is that we most likely want to have upgrade capabilities uh, to it. Because right now we only have the regular Nobelisk, but later on we'll have different versions. And when we have different versions, we're probably going to deliver some goods here by uh, truck or by drone or something like that. And they will provide some extra materials, uh, use different types of the Nobelisks and then produce all the different varieties so that we can have all of them. Which is, of course, what we want. Uh, so we only need one uh, machine that is producing the black powder, uh, but later on we are going to have more machines on top which are refining the use of the Noblisks and uh, combining them with different materials in order to make a specialty ammunition. So in any case, uh, here we have it. So we're going to uh, drag down the sulfur right there. We're going to go into this one, and if you remembered, the Nobelisk uh, requires 20 per minute. 
um, uh, black powder that is. Uh, and if you produce black powder regularly, you get 30 per minute, which is a little bit too much. So we require 10 sulfur and 10 coal per minute. So we're going to adjust that later on accordingly. But right now, we're going to drag down these conveyors. See if we even can do some nice walls to align stuff up. Not quite. And the next best thing we can do instead is to use the gate holes because that's it looks pretty nice like this. And if you click R, you can now use the straight building mode, um, which saves a lot of time. Before uh, it was a little bit tricky getting the straight lines. We had our tricks, uh, which you'll hear me talk about in uh, older uh, tutorials which are absolutely not outdated, uh, except the ones that are, but then I write it in the uh, description uh, and a pinned comment uh, what has changed. Because usually not much uh, has changed, but anyways, um, if something has changed. But one thing that did change, of course, is uh, all the tricks to make straight lines. Now there is an automatic mode. So we need 10 per minute. So we're going to add a little splitter here. This is the coal line, of course, that we looked at before. So if we go inside of here, we can see that the production is uh, 270 per minute, which also happens to be the max speed of the Mark III belts. So this means we'll need to upgrade this uh, belt a little bit just in order to do this little trick. Now, we need exactly 10 per minute, so we're going to write in 8 and click enter. So now we're producing 10 more than the belt can actually hold. We don't need more, we don't need less, which also of course means we'll need to upgrade the belt here. So go to your conveyor mark 4, be there, it's going to be thick, going there. And from here, we can actually just drag a uh, Mark Mark 1 belt instead. We don't need anything more or anything less. So we're just going to keep with the design and use the gate here too. Just like that. So it's pretty straightforward by now. Uh, we'll need to source the, uh, the steel pipes, of course. So we're going to drag them out of this uh, factory. Uh, we need another assembler, of course, which will produce the uh, nobelisks in particular. Could perhaps line one up here. Or maybe not. I think here is a good little location. We're inputting this one to that one. And here we have the nobelisks. So 30 is uh, what we produce now, so we should instead write in the production, um, target production, which is of course 20. So now we're producing 20, now we are receiving 20, we need, we need some steel pipes then. So to get our steel pipes, we will get into this little facility here. Here are we... Here we are having all of the steel pipes. This machine is producing steel beams, so before this one uh, is uh, connected up. Right, these are some mergers. Then we of course need to add a little uh, splitter then. Exactly here. Whoa, we don't have any iron plates. Embarrassing. Got our uh, um, iron plates. What do they call that? I didn't say it's steel plates or something. Iron plates. I confused anyone there. Anyways, we are going to drag these to the base in some good way. Uh, it's a mess inside of here, so um, yeah, this is pretty straightforward. See you soon. And there we go. It's connected up just like that. 
going all the way from inside of there, but still looking nice. Isn't that quite fantastic? So that should of course be uh, all we need. 20 per minute, we have absolutely space for that. Uh, and uh, by the way, in the receiving station for the steel parts, um, everything that's not uh, that's uh, not used is uh, actually synced right away. But uh, we can check that later on when we go there. In any case, the only thing that remains right now is actually to connect this little thing up. So we will definitely need to make a little... A power line connection, uh, add some nice wrap to this structure and uh, see how it looks. Like that, power is now connected up and everything seems to be working fine. We wrap this thing around in a little simple wrap like this and we're actually now serially producing noblesks. Uh, now, I think we should be adding a little container to add up some noblisks while we are um, waiting to unlock the different types of noblisks we can do. And that's gonna be pretty easy to add on later, uh, but we're just going to add a container here to connect or collect them while we're sitting here. So it's it's going pretty, pretty easily here actually. It's uh, just producing them pretty quickly. Yeah, we absolutely are not going to need any quicker production than this, that's for certain. Right, so now we just need to fine-tune our uh, little area over at the sulfur manufacturing or sulfur mining facility. Which is uh, perhaps a little work in progress, but uh, well, that's what it is right now. As you might remember, we are, of course, producing a little bit more than we need at the moment, which is uh, makes no sense. So the only thing we need to do right here is uh, go over to this miner. It's a Mark II miner, but uh, we added it here for future upgradability. Uh, because I played this game a little bit before, so I know we'll need more sulfur later. We're gonna set it to produce 10 per minute because that's exactly what we need uh, right now. And when we're doing that, this container should uh, remain like this and uh, there should be no uh, overproduction. The container should not get empty in any way and it should just uh, continue on as uh, should. Well, there we indeed have it. And of course, uh, I have left the roof open on the Noblesque's uh, little factory. And uh, when we have upgraded some different stuffs here, uh, we will be able to fill up that roof. We're going to add some more machines, add some more floors, uh, and uh, add some transport so that we can produce any type of uh, explosives uh, that we need. But now I do believe we should be collecting what we have produced so far since we went away a little bit so we can uh, blow away some toxic plants and uh, other toxic things we don't want um, and get back to base. You can see the transport line here back to base. It's uh, very nice because right here we are going to transport back the noblesks as well. Um, but I think we're only going to bother with doing that when we have a set up way to make all the different varieties. Or maybe we do it sooner, I don't know. Um, but what I wanted to show you before was that what happens with the overproduction of the steel place? Well, they're going down here. And they are actually being synced right underneath here. So everything that is uh, getting into these containers um, stay there, of course. But here we can see that we have an overflow setting to the center. And the overflow, thus, goes to uh, the sink. That means that all of these containers are always uh, full, but uh, the overproduction is being uh, like that. So uh, now we can actually adjust this little uh, um, chart here where we have the uh, production because we're actually producing a little bit more steel pipes now 
and a little bit uh, less uh, steel beams. However, um, I don't find it very useful, so I'm going to just... Uh, oh, I don't know. I'm just going to remove that sign there so we don't get confused at least. Here we have an output. And, and this is uh, also a little bit inaccurate now. No, what am I saying? This is actually uh, completely accurate. This is what's being used by the other machines. So this is accurate. So we, we don't need to touch that one. Well, there I guess we have it. Automated production of our explosives. And uh, some more to come when we have the different var varieties that we can produce on site too. And then we can drag all of the mixed uh, explosives here. Or perhaps we have a little explosives station over there. Uh, because we have some later game ammunition and uh, explosives and stuff like that. And it's possible that production will be over there too. And then it might not be necessary to drag it over here. We shall see indeed. Well, hope you enjoyed this little video. And if you did, please leave a like. We will be back with more videos, of course. So you should definitely subscribe to uh, stay tuned to this little ongoing series. This is your host Eric of Jimodism and we're signing out with a little for show bang. Anyways, see ya.